1998 Toyota RAV4 CV boot replacement. Check the pin comment for the tom stamps. The axle removal is next. The boot replacement starts at about the 16 minute mark. The axle reinstall starts at about the 1 hour 6 minute mark. This boot replacement job is very similar on many other Toyota axles. You're looking here at the inside now. As you can see, we've got a split boot. Probably we'll find the same thing on the inner boot. So the plan is to remove the axle and to remove the boots, inspect the joints. If the joints are good, if they don't have a lot of sand or water corrosion, whatever inside, then we'll repack and reboot and reuse this same axle. This is a Toyota factory axle. I do prefer to keep those if possible. If that's not an option due to spoiling in here, then we will replace the axle. I'll show you all the steps and all the fasteners that we need to remove to get that axle out. But if you'd like to see a very detailed bolt by bolt, check out this video. I'll put a link in the pinned comment. That's the axle removal on another RAV4 that goes through in much more detail if you've never done an axle removal before, or if you just like to have a little bit more detail. Check out that video. First thing we'll do is set the handbrake. And we will chalk both rear tires. We have to have the whole front end of the vehicle off the ground, both front wheels. One tire chalked. And the other rear tire chalked. Before we lift it, we'll go ahead and loosen the lug nuts. This is a 21 millimeter. Now we'll lift it. For our lift, it's going to be the same on the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive. You're going to get on this cross member here. And I usually put it right about there. You won't have that little bolt uh, if you have a manual transmission. That's for the shifter cable for an automatic, but that's about where we're going to put that, put the uh, floor jack. Okay, you can see where I am there. Hopefully you can see there where I am on that cross member. And that's where we will lift from. We'll make a little noise coming up off the suspension. Again, make sure that you've got both wheels up and that when you place your jack stands, you'll still have both wheels off of the ground. So looking behind this driver's side wheel, that is where I place my jack stands for this job. Right there on that connection for the control arm. You can see I've got the other one set up as well. Make sure your jack stands are at the same height. We'll go ahead and lower it. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but there's no weight on the jack right now. But safety first, always use the jack as well. Double check both of your jack stands to make sure that you're on there well. And if you're good, we're ready to start the repair. Now we can remove these lugs and get the tire off. And then you want to always put the tire here. Safety. Just in case. There's the end of our CD axle. Axle nut is behind this little cover here. We're going to be disconnecting the tie rod end here, disconnecting at least one of those on the sway bar link, and then disconnecting the, the fasteners on the bottom of the control arm. But the first thing to check is see if you have that right there. This is the ABS sensor right here. So there's a 10 millimeter fastener right there that we need to remove. And then also we'll just pull this bracket up so that'll be that 10 millimeter as well. If you have ABS, take that fastener out first and then down here on the sensor, you typically have to wiggle one. This one came out fairly easily here. It's like a, it's a magnet so all kinds of stuff's gonna stick to it. But if yours is really on there and you can't quite get it out, just keep kind of wiggling it side to side before you try to pull it out. Then just get that sensor tied up out of your way so you don't damage it while you're working. Now we'll go ahead and loosen this axle nut. As you can see, there's a key going through here. So I'm just going to 
use the needle nose to get this back into place so we can remove that key. Okay, then this little cover comes off. And there is our axle nut. This is a 30 millimeter. You want to use a six point deep socket. Don't use a 12 point. Use a six point because this sucker is going to be on there pretty tight. You can see I got a little PB blaster on there. I'm going to spray a little bit more. When you're spraying PB blaster, you want to make sure you don't get any on either the studs or on your rotor. So I'm going to give this a good soaking and let it set for a little bit. I assume you're watching this video because you're going to do a reboot, so that means you need to reuse this axle. Um, you got to get these threads real clean. I've already been over it with a wire brush. You can see I've got them cleaned up real nice, put some PB Blaster on there, um, and then I'll clean the PB Blaster off once we get this off. Especially if you're going to use an impact to spin this out, you want to make sure you don't have any uh, obstructions in the threads because you don't want to damage the nut and you don't want to damage the threads. If you get it all cleaned up, you won't have a problem with using either the nut or this end of the shaft. Now you can check that other video uh, if you need a few more methods to remove this axle nut. I have an impact that will spin this right off, but I'll show you a method that will work if you don't have an impact. Take a couple of these lug nuts and put them on here, the 6 o'clock and this 8, uh, eight o'clock lug and turn this if you need it and use a pry slip this pry right in there like that put the other end of the pry on a jack stand and now when we get on there with our big six point when we turn this will resist it the lug nuts are to protect the threads from being damaged and we'll be able to break this free don't put it on the handle especially if you've got a long bar like this bring it in close you'll get a ton of flex on this if you have this strut this this um reach too long so bring it in close so that this is a sh this is shorter so there's our setup i got a nice six point deep socket on here i'm using a three quarter inch drive because it's my biggest breaker bar just to make it a little easier on myself but you can get this loosened with a half inch drive i've done it before and we're just going to turn counterclockwise And there it is. All right. So now I got the half inch drive on on a ratchet. And I'm just going to make sure that it's going to turn smoothly, which it is. Turning nice and smooth. Might even be able to do it by hand. I can. That's good news. Okay. We don't need to take it all the way off just yet. We can leave it just like that. We won't need uh, this pry anymore. Back up here, you can see we got this two nuts for the sway bar link. You gotta undo at least one. Um, if we have the original Toyota, this is gonna be an H7 on the ball and a 17 millimeter on the nut. So you can use a 17 millimeter wrench. If you have an impact, just spin it off with an impact. I'm gonna go ahead and use my gear wrench pass through. Uh, instead of a wrench so I can get it exactly where I want to and I'll use the H7 on a breaker bar here and I will slip the bar over my gear wrench. These suckers can be really really tight. There we go. Okay. Oh darn there goes my light. Just got that one free. If you're only working with just a regular closed end wrench, then get the wrench in a good spot and hit the other end with a hammer. That actually worked so well with this gear wrench. I'm gonna do it again on this lower one. I don't use this pass through too often, but the times that I do use it, it really does come correct. This is a good good case because you know you can't get uh, even a 12 point wrench you can't get it just right in this situation so if you have that ratcheting mechanism it's nice because you can use any little bit of space you have just like that all right go gear wrench to make sure that we don't overstretch the brake line we're going to disconnect this 12 millimeter here don't think this is leaking, but it's if it might be. It's about to be leaking if it's not. I'll replace this brake line. 
I won't show that in this video. So we'll take that 12 millimeter out and then pop this bracket up. That just lifts out once you get that fastener on. I put the 12 millimeter back in there just so I don't lose it. Now for this tie rod end, there's a cutter key here. Got the cutter key out, that's a 17 millimeter. These usually aren't too bad. Yeah. All right. With that nut off, now to get this disconnected, you can put the, uh, thread the nut on here backwards and tap it with the hammer. Or if you watch my channel, you know I love this tool, OEM Tools 27276. Just open this up. You can rent this for free at AutoZone. You're gonna slide this part in here. Put that other part right there. And then you're gonna grab your 19 millimeter and just turn this and it'll pop it right out. Knock the camera, try this again. It's tight, there it is. All right, I love this thing. This will just pop out now. We can put that to the side, and now we're gonna go under here. We got uh, three fasteners. There's the brake caliper we're looking under from the front, and we just have three 17 millimeters, a nut, a nut, and a bolt. Okay, with those fasteners out, these studs have to come and clear the control arm, so I'm gonna try just kind of pry in here. All right, now we can remove this axle nut all the way. Make sure that it's threading off nicely. Because again, you're going to be reusing all this. And we'll see how much work it's going to take to push the axle out of the hub. I might get in there and spray with some PV Blaster. Although sometimes you get lucky. Let's see. Oh, look at that. So I can just push that out. Hey, hey. If you're not so lucky, then put a piece of wood here. So you don't damage the end and strike the other, the other side of the wood with a hammer. Or you could use like a deadbolt hammer or a rubber mallet. But got pretty lucky there. So the axle is free from the hub. I got a wire around the CV axle here. Just got to tie it off to the springs overhead. I'm going to pull this knuckle back and slip the, slip the axle out here. Here we go. And there we go. Here you can see the axle end. There's it split open. Fair amount of grease still in there. It looks okay-ish. We'll see once we get in there. I've got the axle hanging on that wire. I don't see any splits on the inside boot, but we are going to replace that since we have to take it off anyway to get to the um, outside boot. Next up we have these two fasteners. Those are 12 millimeter. Those can be a real pain. You want to soak those with PV Blaster and try to get in there with a wobble. Um, those guys can be a real pain. Looks like I got lucky on these. These are turning out. It's not always the case though. These can be real tough ones. Check that other video if you need some tips about how to get these too. That cover will just pull out once you get those fasteners out. And then you just want to turn the axle until you can get to this part right here where I have my finger. I'm going to use the slide hammer. Again, check that other video uh, if you need more detail on techniques for removing this if you can't get a slide hammer. Um, when you see me going in here with the slide hammer, I'm not going to be putting it here on the boot. Not on the boot. I'm putting it in this groove back here. And I'm going to give it a couple whacks. If it doesn't come out, I'll turn it. The reason is because there's a circlip on the end of the um, shaft into the transmission. And so you got to get it in just the right position before it will pop out. But it usually goes pretty well with the slide hammer. Put a drain pan down because you will lose some transmission fluid. I'm going to be putting the cup in the steel part here. 
the steel part there, not the boot, steel. And uh, hopefully I can work this out. Kind of got a lot of stuff in my way. That's as far as I can get the hammer back. Yeah, let's see, maybe we get lucky. Okay, I turned it. Let's give it another shot. Maybe I'm at a better spot with the circlet. Let's see. There it is. All right. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna quick grab that so I don't mess up that tranny seal. You can hear the transmission fluid draining. There we go. Here's our axle. I got it up on the bench. I have it on some cardboard because it's gonna be pretty greasy when we get all this grease out. In case you're curious about what procedure we're following, we're just gonna follow along the FSM, the Toyota FSM procedure. If you're doing that as well, just make sure that you're in the right section because as you can see, there's a lot of different notes for different axles based on the different transmissions. There were so many different transmissions available in these Gen 1s depending on whether it was two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive or of course automatic or manual. So we're gonna go, in our case, we're working on a four-wheel drive automatic we're doing that left side shaft, so this will work for us. I've got it highlighted here in yellow. When we get down here to the match marks, I'm going to go ahead and make these match marks as recommended in the FSM. You may or may not need to do that. I've seen plenty of people not make the match marks and not have any problem on their reassembly, but we're just going to step through this, so we'll make these little match marks as we go along. Um, one important note on this is we're not going to disassemble the outboard joint. Toyota's got a note in here for all all of the shafts not to disassemble the outboard joint. It seems that Toyota is so emphatic about not disassembling the outboard joint on any of these axles that they give you no direction at all about how to do it. But at any rate, we will not be disassembling the outboard joint. Because of that, uh, you got a couple options as far as removing as much grease as you'd like to from that outboard joint. What you're going to see me do is just use uh, shop towels and rags to remove as much grease as I can and that method moving it around grabbing some more grease if you want to use a parts cleaner or any type of solvent solution then you need to make sure that you have a way of getting all of the solvent out from behind the back parts of the joint where you're not going to be able to to reach in there um, you don't want any solvent remaining in there because it will degrade your new grease and I'll just make this note too just for nomenclature if I'll try to catch it in editing, but if I call everything a snap ring, it's because Toyota calls everything a snap ring. Even when technically this is probably better described as a circlip, this, uh, that one that goes into the transaxle, and this one that will take off for the, for the tripod here, that's probably technically better called some type of retaining ring or retaining clip. Everything's just snap ring. So, so this is our inboard side. This is the side going towards the transaxle. This is our outboard side. Again, we're not going to be disassembling this side. We'll start here on the inboard side by removing these two clamps. First thing we'll do is remove these bands. If you see this style of band with that little part there, that'll be the um, original Toyotas. And what you want to do is get under here. I'm just using a little mini pry. keep my hand out of the way there okay and then you can see this will fold out so we can open this up like that and now we'll be able to slip this band off there we go Of course, you could also cut these. Fold that back, you can see it's the, uh, oh, hopefully you were able to see that. You can see it's the same style there. 
and we'll get this slipped off this way. All right. Now to separate this, this cup actually just has the tripod fitting inside it like that. And the band is what's holding the cup to this side. So with this band off, we can actually just pull this apart. Uh, before doing that, we want to have match marks onto our tripod, the shaft, and this cup. I'll be able to get my match marks in before I go too far. So here's what I'm saying. I'll go ahead and pull this boot off. Okay, you hear the air coming out. All right slip this boot off but I'm gonna keep keep it together all right so you'll want some method of marking I'm gonna use a scribe but I'll just show you I got a piece of tape on the top of the shaft here I'm gonna make a mark here and then also inside here but I'm gonna use this midline here of that part to be the reference so it'll be about right there our more precise mark will be with the scribe and now when we pull this back all right Oh yeah, I want to mark this as well. Uh, I will go ahead and use the scribe to mark the top of the cup. This is to remind me that this is going to be the top of the cup. So we got a mark here. We got the mark there. Now we'll pull this back. And grease is going to go everywhere. Hold this in that same orientation. See how I didn't turn it? Hold this in the same orientation. So this is still going to be your top. And we'll clean the grease off to get some scribe marks on there. This is still my top. Okay, you can see I got that cleaned up enough that I can get on here. I'm just going to make a little scribe mark here that will indicate that this is the top one for reference when we go to reinstall this. I made a mark with a sharpie there um, just so that you could see it. Uh, you won't be able to see my scribe mark just because it's pretty fine. Don't use marker though because it will rub off. It tends to rub off because it's so greasy. So once you have that mark there to orient for the top for reinstall we want to make another mark before we remove this tripod so we have a reference between the splines and the shaft and this part here so i'll just get it cleaned up so let's see i will use now this ring we're going to be taking that snap ring off so i will say right in the midpoint here Make my scribe mark there. And that's going to align right here with that spline. So I'll make that mark right here. That corresponding mark. Okay, don't know if you can see that. I'll have to double check on the camera. We're going across down this spline right here. probably can't see that but I went over that my scribe mark with a black marker there and there just so you can kind of get an idea again don't use marker I'm just doing that to illustrate the point here's our snap ring it's an external snap ring so you're gonna need some external snap ring pliers the ones with the little grippy pads at the end are gonna be the best for this since there's no actual holes to put these in But you're going to get on a good spot and open it up. Oops, might take a few tries because it's pretty greasy. I might have to spend some time cleaning it up too. And be careful because this could go flying. I'm going to have to cover it just to cover, protect my face. But there it is. I'm editing the video and I have these on hand now. So I'm going to show these are the kind of pliers that ideally you want to use to remove that, that, uh, 
this is the old one there, that retaining clip on the tripod. Those little hash marks and especially those little dents, they work really well to hold this much better than the um, snap ring potters that you see me using in the video. All right, so if you can get a set like this, then do that. This was only like 12 or 15 bucks on Amazon. This is a knockoff of a style, I think, by Lang, but I'll put up some other types of this kind of style because this really is helpful. There's a closer look there at those ends. You can see why that would be a lot easier than using the other style. All right, now again, make sure that you've got your match marks between this part and the end of the shaft. Now we're going to tap this thing off. So I'm going to pull the boot back so I can get behind here with a uh, brass punch. All right, now we just need to slip this tripod off. That snap ring was holding it in there. And now we can just use like a brass punch. Don't use anything hard. And we're just going to hit right here. Don't hit even any of these bearings. Don't hit that. Hit the back right here. We'll see if I can just get a few taps here. Otherwise, I might have to take it over to the vise. Okay. I guess I go right there. Let's see. Okay, you can see it's moving. There it is. Quick note, if yours isn't so easy to remove, elevate the shaft here before tapping too hard to protect the bearings. Another option is a vise. Should be able to grab it now. All right. And now we can get this boot off and the other boot. Okay, now I can pull this boot off. And you'll notice when I get this off here, this is done. That's going in the trash. Oh, you'll see. This shape here, that's how you know on your new boot, it's got those three lobes. I'm just going to undo these clamps in the same way here and there and slip that off. Look at that, that boot's even falling apart there where the clamp fits. Well, this is uh, presumably the original toyota axle. And the original boots, which will put this at 24 years old. And same deal up here. Okay, got that band off. I'm just gonna pop that boot. If you use any kind of tools where these um, boot bands go, make sure you don't do anything that's gonna scratch it up such that you would get a leak or anything. There we go. Whew. That sucker was really on there. All right. Now we don't need to disassemble this outboard joint any more than just this. I'm just gonna clean up around the rim, remove this grease and just inspect the grease. There's still a fair amount of grease in here and it feels good. It doesn't have sand in it, so this um, failure was caught fairly soon, which is good. So I believe we won't have a problem reusing this joint. I'm gonna take a little grease from the inside of this boot here. That is our inboard boot, you can see with those lobes. And I'm gonna rub it on my glove. Now this boot is not broken in any way. And we can see that this looks really good. It feels really smooth. You'll see what appears to be sometimes, if I can get this to focus, like these appear to be little grains. That's just little tiny air bubbles from moving the grease around. But this grease looks good. Again, it wasn't contaminated at all because there was no breaks in that boot. And now I'm gonna take some grease from the outboard boot, which was broken and compare it. Here's some gre grease from the outboard and I'm gonna rub it around here and you can see it also looks really good. It's also not grainy, nice and smooth, doesn't have any sand in it. So this failure, luckily, was caught very quickly. And so I'm not worried about just cleaning out as much of the old grease as I can from the outboard joint using rags and uh, paper towel or shop towels. 
if you get in there and remove as much grease and so you want to move the joint around and then a little more grease will come out wipe that up move it again and so forth just to get as much as the old grease out mechanically as you can now if this was real sandy grainy and um, I wanted to try to keep the axle and reboot it then I would probably go ahead and use a solvent I'd probably use gasoline or mineral spirits soak the outboard joint in the solvent now the risk there is like I mentioned earlier not being able to get all the old all the solvent out when when you put in the new grease so you'd have to make sure that you went through a few processes to get that contamination out um, soak it in the solvent remove the grease um, sh I'd shoot it with compressed air soak it again shoot it with compressed air until it was coming out clean um, because it's hard to get all, everything out from behind the ball and cage set up on that side but if it was sandy and I didn't want to replace the joint I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot rebooting it and see if I could get more life out of it then that's what I would do but again if you decide to use any kind of solvent on that outboard joint or even if you put it in a parts cleaner or whatever make sure you have a way of removing all of the old solvent all any old cleaner that's behind there any of the residue from it just so that it doesn't degrade your new grease because if the joint is spick and spam clean but has some type of chemical in there that's going to degrade your new grease then that's kind of you know backtracking so in this case like I said this grease is clean I'm comfortable in just removing as much as I can with the towels and rags and regreasing it but it'll be up to you to decide how you proceed your other alternative of course is if it's real sandy and definitely if you had water contamination and you see any kind of rust or anything then it's a good idea to just forget about rebooting it and go ahead and buy a new axle there's the part number there for our new kit from Toyota and when you open it up you should have all these parts and some bands we'll go over those in a second you should have your new boots this one with the round shape again is going to be for our outer side this one with those three lobes is for our inner side where the tripod goes in you're also going to get a new circ clip that's the circ clip that goes here on the into the transmission the one that we were fiddling around with to get this out so we'll replace that later it's going to come with a new snap ring that was the one right um, that held the tripod on the end on the inboard side it's also going to come with this o-ring you will only use this o-ring if you're working on the right hand side and it'll also come with this particular clamp here let me show you the difference on that one these are the clamps that we will use I'll show you that a little bit more on that in a second this one we are not going to use on this job if there's a balancer on there or a dampener as dampers are sometimes called you'll use this and this is size it's the smallest of the clamps it's size 29.3 millimeters so we can take these two parts and move these aside for our particular case these are the clamps that we will need it'll come with these clamps just like that these long ones are the replacement for these outer ones both of these outers on the original are the same and you might not be able to see those numbers there but I have them written here 92.1 millimeters is the size of the old ones these new ones are 91.9 you might be able to see that there 91.9 so we'll use both of those and then of these smaller ones these are replacements for these clamps here and there's two different sizes one is 32 millimeters 32 point what did I write here 32.7 is our old one that's this our new one is going to be the 32.5 we will use this 32.5 see how it says that there that'll be for our inner so we'll put that there with our inner boot like that and then for our outer boot we'll use the larger one which is on the new size the new clamp is 35.45 and you can see on the old clamp it was 
0.65. You might not be able to see that, but I wrote it down there. So we can put those to the side, and then for our outer clamp, we'll have this together like that. And then one each of the big ones to boot. And that's how we can sort that out. For our grease, you'll see two grease packs in the kit. These are what you will see. Uh, Rare Max SLF 94166. This is a larger tube. And Rare Max LFG KAI. This is a smaller tube, 120 grams versus 180 grams. Both of these greases look identical. They don't really even have a much difference in their viscosity when you feel them. You'll see they have the same color. They're both pretty thick. So if you're wondering how on earth do I know? Well, unfortunately Toyota doesn't label them. So Toyota doesn't label them, but the way that we can determine with a little sleuthing which goes where is to find the part number for the inboard only boot kit. Figure out which grease comes with that, and then we know which of the two greases is for the inboard. As far as I know, Toyota does not sell an outboard only boot kit. If you want the outboard boot, you gotta buy it with the inboard boot because as you saw, you have to take the inboard boot off to get to the outboard boot. However, they will sell you just an inboard boot. So I'm at the Toyota website. I'm searching for parts for the RAV4 that we're working on, which is a 1998 all wheel drive automatic. And I'm searching boot kit front drive shaft. If we scroll down, here are some part numbers. This one here is going to look familiar because this is the one we have on the bench. And you can see this price. I actually got the kit that I have for like 50 bucks. I'll put up where I got it from. Um, these are cheaper and that's because these are just one boot. So these are going to be the inboard boots. You have it labeled here. Um, we're going to go with this one. I've already done the front end research on this, but we're going to go with this one because I know this one is the correct one for our chassis code. If I scroll down, you can see those are the applications. One of them is RAV4, and for RAV4, it's the chassis code SXA10 and 11. Those are the codes for the four-wheel drives. And if we click on our product types, we can see it's an inboard joint. So if you have a cool dealer, you can take this number right here, call them up or drop by and say, hey, can you try to pull the sub-assembly for this? The sub-assembly will show all of the parts, so it'll show the part number for the boot, the clamps, the circlips, the O-ring, and the grease. But a lot of dealers won't do that for one reason or another. So you take this part number and you Google search it. And sometimes you get lucky like this. And look here, there's a dealer selling it. So there's our part number. 3290. There's our inboard boot, all of our hardware. And there's our grease. And as you can see, that grease is this grease. 94166. So we know definitively that the grease for the inboard joint is 94166, which means that the other grease is for the outboard joint. So that's one way to do it. Check the pinned comment and I might make a longer video about how to find parts on websites like this where you can go through using the chassis codes and get a little bit more detail. So we know that, that is this is all that comes with the inboard kit. And so that means this is for the outboard kit. So we will use the LGF KAI on our outboard. So this is our setup that we'll start with first. So we'll get started here on our outboard boot in a second. You can sort of see, I wanted to show you, now that the grease is a little thin there, because I've cleaned out a fair amount of the old grease, you can see it does have that kind of orangish color. And Toyota is always really good about grease compatibility. So if there's, which there is going to be some old grease left in here, as long as, as long as again, you didn't get any contamination with sand and whatnot, um, adding in your new grease with some of this old grease in there isn't going to be a problem. If you take the time to just inspect that cage and the balls, make sure there's no cracks in it. So just get the old grease cleaned out using, um, you know, shop rags, something lint free or shop towels to get in there. Uh, so you don't introduce any contamination. And again, if you, if yours was dirty and sandy, then it's probably a better idea to just think about replacing the axle. I made a scribe mark there in line with my tape. I'm going to take that tape off now, just so I don't catch it with the smaller part of the boot. And I'm also going to clean this grime off here so that the smaller part of the boot doesn't grab that grime and dirt and end up bringing it in here. So I'll get this all cleaned up. 
So I got that cleaned up. I also wrapped some vinyl tape around the splines here. Toyota just recommends that so that you don't damage this inner seal here on the boot when you're putting it on. See that inner seal there? That is intended to fit in these grooves here. And you'll see there's a similar seal there on the, uh, on the larger part. It's to get right in there. That's why it's nice to use these Toyota kits if you can because they, um, they really are really high quality. You can do this on the bench. I'm just going to put it in the vise. If you use a vise, make sure you use rubber pads because you don't want to damage your splines there. So I'm going to take a little bit of this grease. Remember, this is the one for our outer joint. I'm just going to put a little in here. Not too much because I'm going to flip this upside down so I don't want it to fall out. I'll put it in here and kind of work it around some. Now I'm going to slip the boot on. Again, we're going to use that that shape, the round shape one for our outside. And let's see if I can get this over here, how well this will go. Okay, it's going on pretty well so far. If I didn't mention it, I got these for both of these surfaces on the shaft where the, um, where the boots, the in, inner part of the boots go. I got those cleaned up real nice too, so it'll seal well. Let's get this past here. Okay, I'm just going to push it down till it snaps and then I'll pull the boot down to refill it with grease. I'm going to get it right on that part there where that inner one goes. It takes a little persuading. The reason you don't lubricate it is that you do want to have a good seal there so you don't get a better seal if it's dry. There it is. Okay, that just popped into place. Alright, now I'll flip this, flip this upside down. Now I'll put the rest of this tube in here, get it all squeezed out in there try to get every little lash dropped out just when you think you got this tube empty a little bit more comes out now we'll try to get this boot up here into that groove um, the FSM has the boot clamps as the absolute last step just to verify that you don't have any crazy stretching I suppose this will be up to you you might want to put your clamp on if you push this up and it feels like it's gonna push this down and blow your grease out everywhere then stop and clamp this one I'll give it a shot without this clamped and see how it goes and also you can kind of squeeze the boot a little bit to get any extra air out quick note here what I mean about the air you don't want to squeeze all the air out of the boot and create a vacuum because then these accordion things will fold in on themselves, especially on the inboard joint because that's moving axially. It moves in and out inside that cup. So you'll know that you have the air right when you can move it all around. You can move the joint all around and it's not causing any, any part of the boot to fold in on itself. If it happens that the boot folds in on itself, then just open it up and allow a little air in and then try again. Quite a line on that side. There we go. Almost. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Oh, nope. Not on this side. There we go. All right. I'm going to wipe that grease away there. Double check. Back on the bench here. If your kit can happen to come with these kind of clamps, intuitively, as you can imagine from how we took it off, it just folds. So you slip it on and then you don't need a special tool. You just 
Well, now I've kind of messed it up. There you go. You just get that part to fold in there, and then that'll come over back into these just like when we opened it up and then you'll just hammer these little pieces down tap them down I should say when you're tapping them down make sure that you don't mess up the boot this kit didn't come with that style it came with this style and the way these work is it's got this little feature here right there it's like a little triangular little piece and it's going to fit into this that little spot there so it's gonna look like this when we go around I need this to focus that triangle spots gonna catch there oops catch there like that and then we're gonna push this down and tap those down all right I got a little hammer and a punch here because I'll use that punch to kind of fold it over I'm gonna slip this on and make sure that it's in this groove all the way around So you gotta feel with your fingers and also check all the way around. Make sure that's all the way around in the groove. And then let's see if I can work around the camera to do this. This is gonna fold down, and you gotta pull this up enough without it breaking. You get it in there. you have it in right and it's not out of the groove anywhere which it feels like it is good once you have it in there oops you gotta be careful because these if you do it wrong they'll snap and then you'll have to get another one or use another solution hopefully I don't break it okay hopefully you can see that Got it right in there, and I'm gonna turn, pull this down in one motion. There it goes, okay. Okay, I got it down. Keep pressing it down and get these. It'd be nice to have an extra set of hands right now. Let me see if I can just get these started. Okay. That's on there, holding well. Finish it off with this. Okay. Ideally, you want to get those a little bit closer in, but it looks like that'll work. I just gave this part just a couple of taps. If you're stronger than me, you should be able to get it better. But that looks good. We'll get this little bit of, any little bit of grease that came out, and we'll clean that. All right, and then we'll do that inside one. Let's do this inside one, and remember that's gonna be our 3545 for this outer. Okay, make sure I've got it in the groove. This one, you're gonna have to be careful. This this little deal there is fixing to get real close. I'm gonna put a little vinyl tape on that boot. I'm gonna put that little shim there to maybe protect that. Cause I can get a little clumsy. Get this out of my way. Okay, now. Ooh, this one's gonna be difficult. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you can see that. I just got the, just got it on there. Make 
make sure I feel my round that it is indeed in the groove. It is. All right. There we go. Okay. I'm going to get that outside one first. This is tricky. This would have been a good idea for me to grab like a little clamp and get this out of my way now to hold this down for me. I'm going to give that a little tap here. point Precisely on that one. Oh, I think I will sneak in behind there with just gonna move this a little. There we go. Okay, I give this a little tap here. All right, looks good. The shaft is back in the vise here, and let's get this inner boot on. You can see that's where we're going to be aiming there. So let's go ahead and slip this on. This one's going to be tighter because, um, remember, it did have that smaller diameter. This is where it seems to be more necessary for this spinal tape so as not to damage that seal. There we go. And we're going to be going down here. There it is. You kind of hear it snap into place. I got the tape off. I'll just make sure this is nice and clean here. Looks good. Now we can put this ingenious device back on here, his tripod. Every part of a CV axle is just so cool. Um, and these are extra cool with those little tiny needle bearings in there. See those little needle bearings, if I can get this to focus. Pretty remarkable. Um, if you made match marks uh, like so, like I did, uh, in the fashion recommended by the FSM. That match mark is my shaft match mark right here. So that's for our spline alignment. And then that one that I have there, that's for the cup. So when we put this back on, I'll line that up there. The, um, the boot was not damaged at all on this side, so I'm not worried about any kind of contamination and this all feels good. If yours was contaminated, um, then you might try to get in here and clean this out pretty well since you can clean this. Um, clean the inside of the cup and clean this out. So let me go ahead and slip. Oh, I should mention if something happened and you forgot to mark your tripod or your marks disappeared, this side here you can see is different from that side. That 
goes down. All right, so don't try to put it in like that with that facing up because that won't work. Okay, I'll go ahead and get this on. Hopefully you can see my match mark there. That's gonna go to that one there. And there it is, that match mark is lined up with that. Now remember we have to get this down enough to be able to get that snap ring in place. So I'm just gonna push it. Oh, there it goes, it just popped into place. That sounds pretty good. Make sure I can see all around that I have track all around for that snap ring and it looks good. If yours needs a little more persuasion, just use the uh, use the brass like we did before and just tap it and tap it kind of go side to side to side to kind of keep it going in evenly. Now I will grab our new snap ring. Remember that was this here. I'm gonna have to get real lucky for this to work. There we go. All right. It was a little dodgy. I just reviewed that video and I realized that my hand was blocking everything while I was putting this on. It's just, it goes on the same way as we took it off. It's just pretty dodgy. I was covering it with my hand because I didn't want it to go flying. It's pretty dodgy using snap ring pliers like this because there's not a lot for it to grip onto. You have to get it just right. And they've got to be really good snap ring pliers that'll keep it in plane once you spread it and not put any twist on it. But to kind of give you an idea, this is the old, this is the old snap ring that I have here. See, it, it, it tends to want to try to jump off. I was going like this, all right? And then I went up here and went around it and I covered it with my hand just to prevent it from flying off in case it decided to. If you can get the grippy snap ring pliers, it'll save you a lot of grief on this. Take a real close look to make sure that you have got that snap ring in the groove all the way around. So see there shouldn't be any gap between the snap ring and that collar and it should be in the groove all the way around. I'm trying to go super duper close up so you can see what I mean here. See this groove here where my knife is? That's the groove where that snap ring needs to be. You can see it's in that groove and so that part of the spline overlaps the snap ring. You can see here there's no gap between the snap ring and this collar on the tripod and if you can see I don't know how well that's picking up but this collar or this snap ring is going right into the shaft in that slot in the spine so you just want to make sure that the snap ring can, and you know it's not crooked it's not in over here but not in over here etc and then also you can grab this grab this whole tripod pull up on it make sure you can't dislodge it any all right we got the snap ring on match marks are all good and we can get going with the grease this is going to be the SLF 94166 I'm just going to put a little on each of these just kind of work it back and forth I like to get in here on needle bearings just to make sure everybody's nicely lubricated. Once once the car goes for its first drive and everything starts spinning and sliding, the grease will move around, but I do like to have it packed at least to some extent. And we'll go in here. Maybe it will go in the cup as well. I probably got about half of the bottle in the boot and the other half in the cup. It is um, viscous enough that I'm not worried about it falling out when I flip it over. I got my match mark lined up here to go to there. And I'll slip this, slip this on like so. 
Yeah, let's just get this boot on here. Turn the boot a little bit. Let me try to get the back part on first. There we go, finally. All right. Okay. All right. Hopefully you heard it kind of plop, it kind of plops when it gets into the right, right little spot. Um, remember that this moves like so, so make sure that you can move it okay, like that, and you're not getting any like vacuum pulling in. If so, open it up a little bit to allow some air in there. Now we'll get this band on. I'm going to make sure that it's in the groove all the way around just like before. I did notice on the the original axle, the original boots, I should say, the folding point they had was like here. So it was in like the midpoint of one of these depression sides where the lobes are. I don't know if there's a reason for that, but I'll go for that if I can. I guess I'll do it over on this side though. Because I want to have that's that's the that of course there as we know from before is going to be the folding point the pivot point now i'm going to make sure that it's in all the way around get on here all right it's good all the way around now i'm peeling this over there we go All right, looks good. I'll do this inside one. Just caught it there seems like oops sorry seems like there's a little bit more room there let me readjust this so you can see this better seems like there's a little more clearance on this one all right let's see if I can push this down okay all right quite got the grip on that that I'd like to I'm gonna hit the band back here and might have to do this one first let's see Okay. 
me get this old circle clip off here. You can see this one's real loose because I wasn't filming, but I went in there with these guys to see if I could spread it to loosen it up some, and that worked. You don't have to do that though. You could just get in behind it with a pick like this, and then you can work it off. Just don't damage the splines or have it fly up at you and hit you in the face. That does. Okay, take a good look at this, inspect this. And here's our new one that came with the kit. I'm just going to lubricate with some transmission fluid. And this just kind of goes on like so. Try to do it in one go. There. Okay. And that's that's our circ clip. There's the new shaft seal in place as we're getting ready to put this axle in. Again, check out that other video that I keep mentioning if you want to see the full um, removal and install procedure on that. I show that in that other video. The reason I replaced this seal is because it was probably leaking or getting about ready to leak because um, it was obviously the original seal. So it's up to you whether or not you're going to replace your seal. If it's leaking, definitely replace it. If it's not leaking, it may have been replaced before. Whether you replaced your seal or not, before we go back and put this axle back in, we're just going to put a little MP grease around the lip here of the seal. Then back here on our inboard side, we've already got our new snap ring on. We're going to turn that snap ring so it's facing down like that. And just take a little dab of some MP grease. And we're going to put that on there. That'll help to keep that snap ring in place in that downward position. You want to make sure that when you're putting the, trying to put the shaft in, the snap ring is in this position with the opening facing down, not in that position where it will be hanging. Um, if you have it in the wrong way, it's going to really fight you as you try to get it in. So you want to make sure that it's going to face like this and this grease will help out, help to keep that in that position after we get it in. Just put a little bit all the way around. Sorry about the lighting, it's just the best I can do. All right, you can see the end of our shaft here. I've got the I've got the bottom of the clip facing this way. What we're going to do is this these little this little stretch of the splines here. We'll be able to get that in by hand into those splines on the differential that you can see in there. And then to get it past that ring, we're going to have to hit the um, hit the other end of the shaft with the with a block. But what I'm doing now is I'm just pushing in and turning it, and I just caught the splines. Okay, you'll know when you catch the splines because you won't be able to turn right. Well, you could if you turned it hard enough, right? So I'm in the spline there now. The other end, I'm going to hit the camera with the wire. I'm going to loop the wire here, and you've got to loop it around the outside. This is what I mean about the wire. You need to put it on the outside here. Don't put it on here, because it'll just pop right back out. So now the shaft is in there. It's caught on the splines, and now we're going to tap on the, on the end of the shaft here. What I'm going to do is just put a wood block on it, and then just hit the other end, hit, hit the uh, wood block with a sledgehammer hammer a few times while kind of pushing in on it and then it'll pop back in. It might take a few tries, but it'll become obvious when it is in place. Because if I stick the camera back here now, you'll see that it's definitely not in place. All right, see that gap? It's the best I'm gonna be able to do with the camera. Now you're not gonna be able to see the other end, but You'll probably see that boot move. I'm going to put a piece of wood on the other end and give it a couple whacks with my sledgehammer and see if we can get this in. You got to hold it. You got to hold it so you're getting it dead on.
There we go. Okay. Hopefully you saw that. And what I'm gonna do is reach back here and grab it. Grab this, this part here, the cup. Don't grab the boot. Remember the boot, if you pull hard enough on the boot, you might pull it right off the cup. I'm gonna pull this cup back, make sure that I can't move it. You will hear this clicking right there. That's right, that's the normal slack, but I can't pull this sucker out. So we're good. Okay. I'm going to try to give you a closer look there of what I'm talking about. All right, see that little bit of motion? That's normal. That's what you're looking for. That, that's it and no more. Cannot pull this sucker out. And then you want to turn it and make sure that you're catching. And because I can obviously get a little bit of grip back here, I'm going to go ahead and get a grip and turn it back here, okay? You know you're in there. All right. I do want to show you my setup because that's kind of helpful too. Um, this, these two blocks pushed up against the wheel and the tie rod end. You just need to make sure the tie rod end is pushed out um, to that corner there on the control arm. That gives you a really straight shot. And you have plenty of room to put the wood block here, which is what I was doing. I was putting the wood block here, pushing in with one hand and then hitting the wood block with a little mini sledge here. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do while you're in here is regrease your wheel bearings. And those are regreased there. It's pretty straightforward. I do talk about it a little bit more in the other video again. Um, but basically, you just want to get in there, clean out the old grease. Uh, don't introduce any of the dirt and rust. There'll be all kinds of dirt and rust around that seal uh, when you take a look at it. And then what I've used lately over um, the past couple years is this. Perfect for wheel bearings, Lucas Extra Heavy Duty Grease. And you can see it's that green stuff. And I want to mention if you have ABS and you take this dust cover off, uh, make sure when you put it back on that this hole aligns with this bracket here for the sensor because that's how the ABS sensor is reading these little ribs. So now we're ready finally to put this sucker back together. You can see I got the new brake line in. Next, now we'll put the shield back on. Those are the fasteners. Two of these, 12 millimeter. You can see I've got some anti-seize on those threads because uh, these can be a real killer. All right, let's see if we can get this CV axle back in. Now remember there's splines here. And so you're gonna turn the wheel as you need to get the splines aligned. Um, let me grab this and kind of bring it out my way a little bit first. I got these blocks in here. Okay. Take this off. And let's see what I can do here. Now, when you put it in, it's going to tend to want to kind of go in at an angle. So, you got to kind of turn it and then. Turn the wheel so you can catch the splines. I have not got it yet. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Once you catch the splines, you'll know because you'll be able to turn that, but you need to make sure you have it all the way seated. So it's got to get in a bit more. This one is really giving me a little bit of work. There we go. Okay. Whew. It'll look like that when you got it all the way in. You won't be able to see those little teeth from the ABS ring. It'll be sticking about out about this much here. If you can't get it all the way in, if you can still see that ABS ring, you probably just need to grab the shaft back here and, and kind of give it a push and it'll pop through. Now I'm gonna put the axle nut on just a few threads so that this thing doesn't pop out when we're working on those 17 millimeter fasteners to the control arm. We'll get the control arm back connected to the knuckle now. This is going to take some brute force as well. 
If you remember, we had this. So, push this down, bring this over. And then maybe I can get it lined up. Um, I'm pretty close, so I'm trying to walk. Walk up, up wrong way. Let's try that again. Really watch your fingers. Oh, is one of them there? Oh, cool, one of them's in. All right, so. There we go. That was these fasteners, all 17 millimeter, uh, one bolt, and two nuts, and the torque on these is 94 foot-pounds, very tight. That one, you gotta make sure you're on it, because it's kinda, it recessed a little bit. Here we have this tie rod in. That's just gonna go right back in, right back in there. And that was this castle nut. Torque on this is 36 foot pounds, and then the cutter key. And so when you're turning it, you want to end somewhere where you'll be able to pass the key through. Let's see if I'll be able to get the key through. Otherwise, I'll just turn it a little bit more. I got lucky because I can just pass it right through. I don't need to turn it any. Here's the key size. You can get these at any hardware store. You're just looking for one eighth inch, as you will see here. Just take one side, fold it over. That'll work. Now we'll move to that sway bar link. And remember, you might have to use the hex to hold the ball so you can tighten that nut up. Torque on these is 54 foot-pounds. You can use a crow's foot on your torque wrench if you're so inclined. We'll slip our brake line back in here, and that was this 12 millimeter. And if you have ABS, we're going to slip that ABS sensor back in the hole. Put the bracket in first because that part's going to go in there and then that'll line up the uh, that'll line up the sensor for you down below then the sensor just goes right in there and put that other 10 millimeter fastener in place make sure you grab any wire that you were using to hang things and I'm um, set up here with my jack stand and my pry bar my lug nuts on and I'm just in the opposite position since we're going to be turning clockwise now. So I have the bar over there. Uh, here's our, here is our uh, axle nut. It, you may choose to replace your axle nut. I'll put up the part number if that's the case. Otherwise, inspect it, inspect the threads. Make sure you don't have any lubricant on there, like if you were cleaning or something when we had the shaft out. Make sure there's not any kind of lubricant, um, anti-seize, PV blaster, anything like that. And we'll go ahead and get this torque down. It's very important that this is torque to the torque spec, which is 159 foot-pounds. 159 foot-pounds. Here we go. And there it is. Now we get this key in, put our little deal on here. Now you can see I gotta turn it because it's blocking, that tab is blocking. There we go, that'll do it. Here's our key, let me show you the size there. 530 seconds, the length isn't so important because um, you can cut it as long as you've got enough length. So I'd say maybe at least an inch and a quarter. When you put it in, put it in like that, not like that. You see it's not gonna get in as far. And once you've got it in there, 
Just give it a light tap, if I can get around the camera. Give it a light tap, get it in there, and then bend this forward and cut it as needed. Something like that'll work. I can take my lights out of here. I can take these lug nuts off. We get the wheel back on. We'll just do them enough by hand and we'll do the final tightening when we drop it final torque is 76 foot pounds there's our new cv axle boot that's the outer one there you're looking from the inside and i just wanted to show the mess that the um, seal removal causes especially if you have it setting overnight like i did waiting for the seal to come in It causes a lot of dripping and it ends up all the way over here. So this is also kind of a, a clue, if you do see this, that you have a transmission oil leak at that shaft sail. Um, I like to clean all this up so that in the future I will know if a new leak occurs. Check the other video for a lot more detail on the refill here. Um, but you lose about half a liter of ATF if you just pull the axle and you, you lose about three quarters of a liter if you do the axle seal as well. So you need to make sure you add that fluid back. To add it, just remove this dipstick, put a funnel on here, and pour right back in through the dipstick tube. I won't get into any more detail than that other than to say, again, check that other video because it goes into detail about the different types of fluid for the different applications because um, there's so many different transmissions that they put, transaxles that they put in these models. And it also shows the proper total procedure for checking the transmission fluid. After you go for a test drive, turn the wheel all the way to the left and come back in here if you're doing this driver's side and you can have a look there at that seal without taking any parts off if I can get the camera in the right space. There's the drive shaft there and you can have a look at the seal, make sure it's not leaking. And look at the boot, boot band, make sure that's not leaking. It's not leaking and so we're good. So that is a wrap on the boot replacement for the RAV4. You can see here I have another kit. That's the same kit. And that's because I'm going to be doing the other side, the passenger side, on a RAV4 as well uh, coming up soon. So if I can, I will record that job just to document the minor differences uh, in the four-wheel drive between the passenger side and the driver's side. So check back to the channel for that. Until then... I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and good luck with your repair.